The following program is brought to you by Gizon Productions. Totally Unnecessary Wrestling Podcast. I am your host, Cody James, and as always with your co-host... Oh, 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 Cody. I'm coming in hot today. I got the hot takes on professional wrestling, Cody. My name's Kevin Porter. What's up, man? I'm going to start dropping pipe bombs and okay. everything, man. We're going to maybe drop a pipe bomb or two today. I mean, I don't know, man. Boom! Boom! <laughs> Boom! Shit, fucking what Raw and SmackDown was this week. I might just have to drop a fucking bomb on WWE. But we've got that plus much more to talk about. Cody! Raw is alright this week, whereas last week it was kind of a dumpster fire. This week, SmackDown continues being fucking awesome. And uh, we are also going to talk about All In. We are going to discuss a thing I proposed to people on on uh, the Twitters, which is basically if you've watched wrestling, if you used to watch wrestling in the past and you stopped, why? And, and the response, and to, to chime in, the response was overwhelmingly positive it seemed like on 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 twitter there we got a lot of responses there man so we got a pretty decent amount yeah there you go there you go man people responding to you on twitter and uh we are also going to discuss some uh some other things that i saw on twitter mostly regarding the bells coming back someone had proposed. you're a hot you're pretty hot on the bellas man so Fuck. Proposed, not in the good way <laughs> someone proposed on 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 twitter whether or not anyone was interested and basically the resounding uh the resounding, uh, you know, thing was no, 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 no one like, no one's happy about the Bella Twins coming back. No. So let's go ahead and kick this off on, on a positive note, Cody. We are starting with SmackDown. SmackDown. WWE SmackDown. We started Lost. off with a rather interesting segment, I guess, with uh, the New Day. And then Booker T comes out as King Booker. King I thoroughly, Booker! I thoroughly enjoyed this segment. Then I mean, definitely being able to see Kofi, Big E, and if I can Xavier, uh, chum it up with uh, the five time, five time, five time, five time, five time WCW champion and the five time WWE tag team champions. And then he did a spin Rooney and it was fucking bitch shit in uh, front of tons of people in the audience and people watching at home. It was pretty fucking hilarious. I kind of think it was sort of like, why? Why is this starting off? Because, again, we got other things that are a little more important. Like, Maybe like, they just wanted to get the shenanigans out of the way and then so just concentrate on some the serious, serious shit. Because it, it, as we that. saw how in SmackDown, it ended on quite the serious note, but we'll be getting there. But one more point on the whole uh, Booker T uh, New Day segment was I really enjoyed it when Booker T was anointing oh, up. Names? And he then Big E's like, oh, what's my name? He's like, you're Big E. Like, <laughs> sucker! <laughs> sucker! <laughs> you big E, sucker. Yeah. I love that part. So, yeah, he basically got boom! Yeah. One of those! Up to yours, buddy. Total, totally a thumbs up on the segment, bro. He probably had some for Big E, and he forgot it. He got out there, and he's like, oh, fuck, I know two of them. That's the- but I forgot Big E's uh, shit. What, a, what That's I the do? one thing he spaced on was Big E's fucking name? Because we know this is all written, so, you know. I think I think they're trusted enough to a point to be able to carry themselves. But yeah, you're right. I'm sure most of that was scripted. But yeah, it was pretty cool to have have uh, King Booker show up randomly out of nowhere for no reason at all. Nah, always good to see Booker TV Booker TV Booker T on your TV, Cody. It's yep. always a good thing. Can you dig it, sucker? I can. And I dug the next segment as well, which was Jeff Hardy uh, this taking on Randy Orton in a show. Hell in a Cell gimmick bout. Come on, man. Aren't you excited? Yeah. Randy Orton and Jeff Hardy in a hell in a cell, Cody. I was excited, but then I had to see that before, while I was walking down the aisle, they had to show that fucking ear segment again. Stop showing that. It's the heat for the whole uh, the whole rivalry, bro. He's like, you tore out my fucking earring, Randy Orton. Well, no, he doesn't, I'm wear, his, he doesn't you. wear his spacers while he goes out there, but he 
keeps digging into his that, fucking... Yeah. Well, you, you, know, you know what I mean, though. He tore out my fucking ear, man, so... I don't know. I like Jeff Hardy. Were, I'm, I like Randy Orton, so I'm, I'm pretty stoked to see him in a Hell in a Cell. If we were doing video, I would I would in, intersect an image of people who have ripped out their fucking earlobes doing this stupid shit, the, you know, spacing it and getting bigger and bigger. It's yeah. pretty fucking gross. They're just teaching lessons to kids, man. They're like, no, I'm not going to fucking do that to my E. Good for WWE on that shit, man. That's positive... Uh, you know, positive role model. Positive PSA right there, guys. Don't fucking gauge out your fucking ears, you dummies. Yeah, and I'm glad we've only had, what, one match with Randy Orton and uh, Jeff Hardy yeah. so far? I hope we don't have any other matches going into uh, he- uh, Hell in a Cell. I think they're definitely going to hold off until they meet each other inside the Hell in a Cell. Not saying they're not going to touch each other, Look, but they're not going to have an official match. They need to match. for multiple reasons. One, Jeff Hardy's not looking to, you know, too spry like when he came out. There's a reason he's being limited just to, you know. No, even his movements, like when he does this stuff, you know, at the beginning. Yeah. His entrance. His whole entrance thing. His entrance he's when full. he's like twitching like a seizure. Yeah. Leave me. No, not that one. The, the one. The, no, no, no. I'm just saying. I'm just the, throwing it. The in. old school Jeff yeah, Hardy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Jeff Hardy boy Jeff Hardy. I know what you're saying. The, the it's like a seizure one. and he's like. Don't leave me, don't leave me. Whatever. But yeah, that whole, <laughs> that whole thing that he does. Like I was watching him and he kind of looked like he was sort of limiting himself. Yeah. Sort of doing it like. But. Not really trying to do it too much because he didn't want to. He didn't want to crank his neck or fuck up his back more. He looked sort of. I'm surprised you're letting him wrestle out there. I mean, like, how is he convincing them that he's like? They know he's fucked up. Like, I was like, ah, he's a he's a veteran of twenty fucking some odd years. Let him go out there and just destroy himself. Like, I I'm kind of so. scared going into that Hell in a Cell man to see exactly what's hope, gonna happen, dude. I'm a I little scared. Do, I hope they do a Shawn Michaels with them. You remember what? Do they the did halfway. With... Do the halfway up the cage. Well, no, not that. Uh, when Shawn Mike, uh, you remember the the match, uh, the casket match gets thrown out, fucks up his back. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And for like three months, all he did was come on TV and didn't do shit. Yeah. Oh, okay. I see what you mean. Like up into the build of it. Okay. I thought you meant like on, during the match, like have him climb up halfway up the cage, and then Randy Orton like fucking pulls him down, and he like falls to the table or some shit. Like maybe not have him ascend the whole way up, but just halfway. Yeah. You know. They'll probably do that, but I'm just saying. I, I hope going from here to yeah, they to very, Hell in a Cell. Yeah, it's I hope limited. it's very limited. I think it is. And ring stuff. I mean, last week we saw that Swan Tom off the fucking box. I mean, that looked fucking brutal just doing that. Yeah, and when he got up, he was like, and I mean, especially off that SummerSlam fucking bomb, was like, "What are you doing, Jeff? Fuck!" I think it was like the not the next night, but the night after. It that. was yeah, it was the yeah, it was that it was following like, Tuesday they did the. What are you doing? He's like, oh, I got it in there. I got to get it in there. The, the, the fans like maybe, it. Maybe he was like, okay, I got these two fucking horrendous bumps. Rather than spacing it out, I'm just going to do them all at once. Yeah, he's probably like, I'm go- I'm taking a fucking a, a little bit of a rest after this shit. Like, watch, after Hell in a Cell, he's getting written off, written off TV, dude. He, I wouldn't be surprised if he took some time off, like, towards, like, WrestleMania next year and, like, you know, like gets healed up. I mean, the, the sad part is, is he just came back, like, what, like, WrestleMania? Like, yeah. right after WrestleMania? I mean, I he's WrestleMania. only been on the road for... I mean, but look at... Like, Matt, though, man. He's so broken down, dude. I don't think he's been on No, TV no either. pun intended there, but, I mean, he's fucking broken. No, he's dude. not broken anymore. He's woken. His body's broken, though, man. Anyways, we're gonna move on to the next segment. The Miz and Marie send a message ahead of Hell in a Cell. Hell in a Cell! Come on, take me down to the cell. Frankly, I would prefer this match in a Hell in a Cell because then you can have the men fight fight each other and the yeah. women fight each other, and it's not so like this match is gonna suck. <laughs> like <laughs> come Hell in a Cell, man. It's just the, yeah, I mean they're the just mixed, I hope it doesn't suck, but the mixed tag matches are just sort of like they're very routine. Well, no, there's like you don't get the hot tag. No, you do, but... No, you don't. No, you don't. You, you don't uh, get the hot tag. You can't fight it like a regular tag match. Yeah. Because the regular tag match involves you holding one guy in a corner, you know, yeah. and you're half, you're, you're half, half a yeah. sandwich in the yeah. ring. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they could, t- they could have Brie getting her ass kicked by fucking Lana, and then, you know, Brie makes the comeback, tags fucking Brian, and Brian comes in, and then Miz automatically Lana. comes in. Reese. Lana... Maurice, what they're all like? They're all blonde, dude, with fake fucking titties, dude. Like, I don't fucking know the difference. Sometimes. Blonde bimbos with boobs. Blonde bimbos with some titties, you know. So, 
Um, fair enough. <laughs> fair enough, man. It's it's hard to get. Who's hotter, Lana or Maurice? Oh, that's a good fucking dude Lana right now I mean Maurice is hot but nah actually I don't even think Maurice is that hot I think Lana's way hotter dude I don't know if I woke up with either one of them if I woke up with either one of them after a night of drinking and we're both naked I'd be like hell yeah well I mean don't get me wrong if that was the situation I wouldn't be complaining if Maurice is right next to me but hey man you know (laughs) that's neither here nor there but anyways uh, again I'd uh, I don't like mixed tag matches. Yeah, I, just I don't. don't. I, I, I just want to a Texas yeah. Tornado match, or whatever, where they both fucking just all four of them get in there and fight all over the fucking arena and shit. Yeah, I was just I was, do that. Well, I mean, we got the, the. Why can't we do that? They got the the whole Australian show coming up here, and they've already announced that it's Daniel Bryan and the Miz against each other, uh, with the winner getting a number one contendership against either you know AJ Styles or Samoa Joe, depending on who has the title at that time. But, you know, so eventually we're going to get to a singles match, but it's just like, this is just a way of prolonging it. They're bringing fucking Nikki back. I mean, you know, it's just, they're making a comeback. So, I mean, you know, you just have to fucking grind through it for the fall, you know, I suppose. You know? And, and I read through a rather long thread and nobody fucking gave two flying fucks that the fucking Bella Twins were back. No one. Yeah, there was I, like, I'm not surprised that people would be There was maybe it. three people and 50 people had, had answered, and they were all like, no, no, no. They're like, fuck you. Fuck you for bringing this up. <laughs> no one gave a shit. But I do think that, given the situation, they have found a way to, you know, have like these these two people sort of like go at each other. And I think it's done a little better than than uh, the John Cena and Brie Bella one. Oh, Brie it's Bella. Nikki. No, it's Nikki because Nikki's banging John, and then <laughs> Daniel's banging Brie. So. Whatever. They both got fake titties now, so who gives a shit? Does Brie have fake titties? I don't think she has fake titties. Yeah, she, I think that she's got those mom titties, dude. There's a difference. I don't know. Those mom titties are filled with milk, dude. Whatever. It's delicious. Uh, let's see. Frankly, I think that uh, they had there was a match between Brian and Andrade San Almas. I thought the match was pretty decent. Dude, it was a great match. I mean, Andre San Almas they, proved is keeps proving that he's a main eventer uh, waiting. Yeah, and then the end. I believe, if memory serves, uh, Maurice and uh, Maurice and the Miz came out and cost. Uh, that's Brian the match. Yeah, and there was a beat down. Yeah, there's beat Which I down. like beat downs. I'm I'm a fan of beat downs and it's not saying that I'm not enjoying the build up, you know, cuz I do like the Miz and Daniel Bryan interacting, man. And, you know, it's 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 you know, expected that their wives are going to get involved. You know, so it's not that I don't necessarily hate the Well, I know, think you would like it. Segment, I think you'd but, like it a lot more if if it wasn't like, oh, we're getting a mixed tag match. Yeah, it's like if we just had like a one on one match with each of them in their corners. Like, I'm okay with that, but and then it's not even against like I don't know. It's just it's just the way WWE does it because other other uh, organizations do these mixed tag matches and they don't have lame fucking what like the men and the women can fight each other. Like, yeah. Yeah, I know. It's like that's making a comeback now. You notice that on the indies and the fucking yeah. like, Lucha Libre or Lucha Libre, Lucha Underground. But they do make it a, a point to. That's cool, I guess. The women whatever. can beat the shit out of the man. Yeah. I mean, the man's all jacked up on steroids, but this little tiny 120 pound woman's beating his ass. Yeah, come on. Come on, WWE. I want to see Alexa Bliss power slam fucking Roman Reigns through a table. Fucking book it, Vince. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm fucking talking about. Man on woman violence. But I mean, like I was saying earlier, you you can't really do anything of a tag match in this fucking mixed tag match crap the way that WWE has it because they yeah. don't they don't want their fucking investors and shit to go. We didn't really like that uh, the Miz is beating up on one of the Bella twins. It looks bad. Yeah, yeah, they're all about that money, man. So they got to keep making that money. So they can't let their their women beat up their men. So I mean, like when 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 the Miz tags tags out and he tags in Maurice, then the other side has to flip. And it's yeah, like, I mean it kind of stops the fl- the flow of the match. It I mean, stops the flow yeah. of the match. It re- it doesn't have like anything of a tag match. Yeah, that like the good tag matches of like, you know, one one guy comes in, he starts the match off, the other team beats up on this guy, keeps him in their corner, their area of the ring. 
And, you know, he keeps inching closer and trying to tag out, but he doesn't. And then he finally does, and you get that hot tag, and the guy comes in, and he fucking, you know, he double teams the two, and he fucking, you know, swings the, the momentum back on their side, and mm-hmm. go from there. But you can't really yeah. do any of that. can't do that. You can't, can't do, do that. any of that in no. fucking mixed tag matches. <clears throat> yeah, fucking move on from that shit, dude. I'm fucking, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done, man. I'm done with your mixed tag team bullshit. Uh... The next thing is Becky Lynch is the complete opposite of Roman Reigns. Ooh, and ooh. thank you for that, Vince. Thank you. Thank you, Vince, for changing the flow, motherfucker. We don't want Becky Lynch to be anything like Roman Reigns. So, with Becky Lynch, um, it, se- it seems like they're kind of maybe, like, have gone, like, hey, you know how last week we were talking, like, you know how you were saying, like, no, she's she's still a face, but she's just a badass fucking baby face now? And I was like, man, they're trying to make her a fucking heel. I mean, that's the direction. Well, what I heard this week on the download, this is just between me and you, Cody, and my source, John Pollock. He was talking about how the WWE this week on this week's SmackDown basically tweaked the fact of they're not going to fucking portray Becky Lynch as a full-on heel, but they're going to do more or less what you were saying is what they were, like, the original intent, you know. The anti-hero. Yeah, and that's what what she is. Or what the 90s Attitude Era fanboys call, he's an in-betweener. Yeah. He's an in betweener. So I'm glad to hear that they they made the little the little that little fucking change, dude. That's very important. I'm really happy to hear that WWE fucking did that. Um, so great. You well, know, I mean, I'm, everyone I'm, I'm, saw through that when she said, "Oh, I, I, I got a couple tweets." Yeah. Oh, I only got like I was only trendy like number one on Twitter in the fucking through, world. And you go through it, and everyone is in favor of Becky Lynch. Like, like she's the Daniel and, Bryan of the women's division right now, dude. And and when, except Daniel Bryan went about, went about it in a totally face manner, like hundred percent face. And Becky Lynch has been getting slept on too. Well, that's long. like WWE though. That's like you're talking about. That's just WWE and the way they do things. Like, oh, okay, you guys like that person? Fuck you. Fucking flip it then. You know they flip it and try. And but the crowd luckily dictated, and they fucking you know instead of going the whole Roman route and just and John Cena you know, fall force feeding it down your fucking throat, they they made the abrupt change within an appropriate amount of time and fucking. Yeah swapped it out and shit so yep that was good uh, but yeah Becky Lynch is the complete opposite of Roman Reigns yeah and that's another, that's one thing I forgot but I'd like to talk about that a little later real quickly yeah it, it, revolving the uh, the universal title and the, the uh, intercontinental title but anyway you mean the Heinz Ketchup World Championship yeah <laughs> <laughs> so this little thing here says that the WWE is determined to get fans to cheer for Roman Reigns, but it has been largely unsuccessful to this point. What the fuck kind of like sentence is that, dude? Four years of not paying attention, guys. Like we're going on four fucking years, if not longer now. I'm Roman not... Reigns experiment has failed. That happened in 2015, <laughs> Cody. It is gonna be fuck, dude. It's gonna Three be years this year. Okay, so four this coming WrestleMania. Okay, wow, Vince. Really, I mean, just we got Cena for over a decade. I mean, what's the fucking, you know, Vince is a fucking. He works out a lot, man. The fact that you know, he may be around for a lot longer, bro. Like, I don't know, dude. We may have Roman Reigns until you know twenty thirty, dude. We we can only hope that he'll get in a fucking casket match or something and get Shawn Michaels out of the year. Oh, you're wishing injury upon this man. It's the only way we can get rid of if him. It's, if it's dealt in the cards, Cody, it's dealt in the cards. I'm sorry. It's the only fucking way we'll get rid of this fucking guy. Because he won't get turned a, a heel. That's all we, That's all we need. Where it's people that, might actually go, yeah. Give, give him that six-month yeah. heel run, Vince. That's all we want. Give him six months. Come on. See what he can do. He'll be the biggest fucking heel in the, in the company, dude. He'll, he'll be making well, money. When he's already a heel, he gets booed the most. <laughs> There's no point of changing direction, Cody. You no, we stay. We he stay gets booed because no one wants to see a guy who looks and talks like Roman Reigns be a fucking face. You get him out there and do a heel thing, and huh? After about two or three months, he's gonna be the biggest heel in the fucking company and be almost like the NWO was after a couple months, where it flipped from people tossing shit at him to being oh. Cut wow, like there's an entire code. stadium full of fucking NWO shirts and signs. How did that happen? I wonder. Me wonder. <laughs> you get the fans what they want. <clears throat> I don't know, man. Well, kind of. Let's keep this fucking. 
But the the company it Bo says Gallant. here that the company is yeah. equally as determined to get fans to boo Becky Lynch and again. Well, they it made that shift, dude. They made that shift. She's anti-hero now. She's she's babyface Stone Cold Steve Austin. That's what she is. That's her character now. Yep. And I think that works. Yeah, <coughs> that, that dude. That's what we the fiery wanted. red fucking. Yeah, I mean that's the, all we wanted, right? The badass yeah. fucking, you know, like fuck you. Like she I'm needs, sick of this shit. She needs to start dropping people on those next uh, that you know those useless excuses of fucking necks out there, man. Like the Charlotte, stacks of dimes. Stack, that's stacks the word I was looking for. Fuck like, your yeah. stack of dimes, pal. Nut fucking motherfucker. She needs to be dropping fucking stunners. No, I'm excited, dude. And then when, you know, on you know, Tuesday night, Lynch came out, uh, uh, came from out of nowhere, which was awesome. She attacked Charlotte, which was also awesome. That was the best part of the show, dude. Was she? The, she the beat Carmella, which I was hoping she would beat Carmella. But this is real subtle. If she came out before she beat Carmella, that'd make her a heel. But since she waited until the minute that she beat Carmella, that makes her an anti. Did you let the match conclude? You see, you see yeah, that little, see that, you see that that. little subtly there? That's good, though. That's a good... I like it. I mean, that's what I'm saying. That that tiny little tweak, dude. That tiny, tiny little detail. That's good. I like that. I like hearing that. It was dude. awesome hearing her call Flair a bitch. Yeah, that was cool, dude. Then she did it on fucking Instagram, too. I, I, saw, like, yeah. I saw I I saw, saw her on Instagram post something, and she's like, bitch. And I'm like, oh! <laughs> I liked it. Yeah, fuck you, Charlotte Flair. We're sick and tired of seeing you and Alexa with the fucking belts. Fuck you, Flair. <laughs> Fuck you, Flair. You fucking suck. <laughs> uh, let's see what else they I have. think that was pretty much it. Those, those were all the good it. points on, on SmackDown, so. Yeah, those were all the... What was, what was that one line? Oh, it was the uh, it was the Charlotte match, right? That was the, yeah, that uh, was the main event. Yep. Okay. Carmella. Carmella! I thought so, but I, can't, I wasn't quite, uh, wasn't quite yeah. sure. Yeah, man. Straight up, dude. Now let's uh, look over the the raw results. Yeah, we're gonna look they're trying, the they're trying to say that huh? Braun Strowman turns heel. Dude, he turns heel. I completely forgot until this very moment. I'd forgotten about that, but you know what? He turns heel because you know you should just keep going out there being a face and getting his ass beat because people want to see Braun Strowman be a sensitive baby face and get his ass beat. That's what people want. Is this your see. impression of Arn Anderson? <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> it's my impression of stupid <clears throat> fucking retards who write this garbage. He turned hell. <sighs> well, essentially, that's what they're trying to fucking do with them. I mean, like, what the fuck is that shit, dude? Like, again, I think they. He's, why can't they just be two baby faces, like, just gonna beat the shit out of each other? Because, again, I think he's the anti hero. It's the same he's thing they did with Ryback, of- dude. That's the exact same shit they did with Ryback. It's like everybody was fucking behind him. He's a good baby face, da 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 da. And then guess what? They switch him heel, and then he fucking just did a nosedive, dude. And he just shat the fucking bed, like literally. And it's just. But I mean, it 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 it'll, it'll depend. Like takes away all the fucking momentum. We have to see how they go from here. But I think that him being more. It's only temporary, is what you're saying. More heelish is like he's. Yeah. He's got three people to fucking contend with. Right. Right. Yeah, I see what you mean there, man. I just, I don't know, man. I just, it kind of rubbed me the wrong way. But, I mean, it's kind of cool seeing fucking, you know, uh, McIntyre and Ziggler, you know, aligned. I mean, you, somebody, I, I, was, I was listening to a podcast. I think it was, week, I don't. They yeah. made mention about, like, pairing one more guy and then make it, like, a, put Paul, Paul Heyman with him and make him some, like, sort of, like, you know, a like fucking faction. faction of some sort, you know. Because, like, like, they need more times, factions, man. Maybe, but a lot of times, I don't, WWE can't do a faction because... Well, dude, I don't know. And it, Paul, uh, they got the shield over. Paul Levesque. Paul Levesque. He can do uh, a faction, the uh, the Undisputed Era. But, I mean, for whatever reason, in in WWE, the main roster, they don't really do factions too well. I agree. But I think that it was just a, a matter of circumstance, you know? Like, I don't, it'll depend on, you know, yeah, he, going bro- forward, is he going to keep aligning himself with... He's going to beat the shit out of him at some point, dude. It's, at one of these points, Braun's going to fucking just lay him all out, and he's going to be a baby face again. That's yeah. After whatever Hell in a Cell match. You know, yeah, he's going to get on. the title, and he's going to fuck him over. Yeah, exactly. exactly. I swear to God, though, if he loses, like, fuck you, Raw. You think You think he's going to fucking lose at Hell in a Cell? I'm telling you, he has a fucking title run until fucking WrestleMania, at least. Well, you've, always, you've been pretty fucking solid on calling this shit lately, so... 
I think the earliest... Wait, what do you mean lately, the Kevin? Earliest, All the time. The earliest they'll pull it is fucking Survivor Series. It might last... It, it, they might, you know, split the difference and do it at Royal Rumble, but I think he's yeah. holding this fucking thing until WrestleMania. And it's like, woo, I really want to see a fucking ketchup red fucking title be defended every week. <laughs> the Heinz Ketchup World Championship. Like, Universal woo. Championship, man. Congratulations, which, WWE. Which, 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 which quick side note right here. I was telling you at first, like, why is Seth fucking holding an IC belt and this fucking jack-off has a, has a universal title? Yeah, they need to bring back that European championship so Dean has something, dude. But I was going, well, think about it. The universal title has no fucking lineage and it doesn't matter at all. Zero Garbage. lineage. Oh, Goldberg held it. Cody, Cody, Kevin Owens held it. Oh, shit, Finn Balor's the first universal champion, Cody. And he held it for a day or some shit, didn't he? He held it for 16 hours. <laughs> Good for him. <laughs> May have been full 24, I don't know. Good for him. I'm sure somebody's going to point it out on Twitter. Fuck you, Twitter. But my point is, is that the IC belt has fucking... 50 years or more, or a long time, of of a lineage. Yeah, man. Pat Patterson won that shit down in Rio de, de Janeiro, man. Down there in Brazil, man. He won it, won it in a tournament, dude. Proven lineage. I mean, this thing... The, it's like 1976, so it's like fucking like almost 50 years. It's 42 years. Was that 50 years? years? Yeah, okay, so that's 42, yeah. I'm fucking... But my up. point is, is that it has a long history to it. Of course, I understand. And it's got Seth, definite lineage. Seth, it has a belt that actually means something. Whereas we have the WWE Universal title, which means fuck all. Well, Cody, you gotta remember, though, man. Titles don't matter in today's WWE. They're just props. They're there just to serve as a, hey, guess what, bro? Bullshit. <laughs> Bullshit, because I bet you anything that he gets paid You more. defend my style. I defend your style. What? What? I bet you anything that Roman Reigns gets paid huh, more huh. with the belt in the same match versus without the belt in the same fucking Roman's match. Roman's a paid man. Roman makes a lot of money, dude. I've seen his bills. He eats a lot of steak, dude. Well, Somebody posted him. that shit online. Was like, damn, Roman. You need to tip a little bit more with the amount of money you're making. Nah, that's all, that's all make-believe. I, I believe Roman Reigns, despite all of his you know issues that he has in the ring and with the fans he's a good tipper ladies and gentlemen roman well, reigns is him. a good tipper good for him who gives a shit pay it forward who gives a shit now dean on the other hand whew, look it up online ladies and gentlemen it's all out there allegedly allegedly <laughs> dean ambrose is gonna hear this podcast he's like fuck you kevin porter you stupid <laughs> bitch <laughs> A fucking he's DDT gonna, your ass on the concrete. Gonna, he's probably gonna fucking cut a promo on you. He's gonna and then DDT your ass on the concrete like fucking uh, uh, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. Was Ooh, that no shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jake the get, Snake. I, uh, yeah. yeah, I'm gonna be legitimately knocked out. Jake the Snake was like, out. no, I don't want to fucking do it because you're gonna get hurt. And, and he got hurt. And Ricky Steamboat was like, come on, I owe this guy some, please. He really wants me to do it. And he's like, whatever. I just make me look good, bro. And then he does it, the guy gets hurt, and he looks at the fucking booker, and he goes, yeah, this is your fucking fault. It's like, fuck you, man. Jake the Snake's coming through uh, Seattle here next month, Cody. Awesome. Fucking September 15th, uh, but the fun... Dude, he's gonna be at the fucking fun house. It's such a tiny venue. It's just a bar, basically. (laughs) With a tiny stage, dude. Like, it's no bigger than your room. That sucks. I bet if Hulk Hogan came through doing the same fucking bullshit... Hulk Hogan would get, like, the Paramount or some shit, dude. He'd get, like, the net... You know, he'd get the Paramount. They'd give him the Paramount, dude. You know? And it's like, Hulk Hogan's not funny. (laughs) Let me tell you something, brother. I don't like Hulk Hogan shooting interviews. He's always full of shit. So, what's the fun? It's not really a shoot. And the Ultimate Warrior was right. This guy is so fucking deep in the work that he doesn't know what's a work and what's a shoot. <laughs> Terry Bollet is penis now, Cody. <laughs> it's probably five and a half inches long. I thought they fucking... Hulk Hogan's penis, thought... though, is approximately ten and a half. It's a, it's a decent It's a fucking size. skyscraper, motherfucker. He lays Woo! down on his back and that thing's fucking flipping the clouds around and fucking yeah. giving it the big boot. Then you got know, that song kicks in. It's like dun 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 dun. dun. <laughs> when it comes crashing down, it hurts and so high. So yeah, they, they had an opening segment with Roman Reigns and uh, and Braun Strowman, and I still think the meme works that a uh, Vince. Have you have you seen the Simpsons episode where they're like, 
Are they are they booing or going boo earns and and At that Hans film Mole festival? Man, Hans Mole Man raises his hand and goes, I always sing boo earns. That's a great episode, dude. I love that. I, I think the same is true here with fucking Vince going in the back. Are they saying Roman or, or Strowman? And one person raises their hand and goes, I always say Roman. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Roman. Say Roman. Man. Say yeah. Roman. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm going to eat a steak. I'm going to put ketchup on it. Delicious <laughs> ketchup. Ketchup on a fucking steak. <laughs> well done. But yeah, how many how many how many times can the shield come out and give Roman a pop and prop his ass up? Yeah, well, I said it last week, and I, I do enjoy watching the shield uh, reunion. So I'm not going to shit all over it, but yeah, the fact that Roman, you know, it's uh... eventually people are going to get bored, and it's going to the the uh, the fallout of it's going to be uh, no hardly anyone's going to go burn it down, or hardly anyone's going to going to pop for uh, for uh, Dean Ambrose's so. I don't know, man. I'm I'm a fan of all of them, I guess. I don't know. I, I mean, we sit here and talk shit about Roman Reigns, but, you know, I still enjoy his matches. And, like, I would say, if anything, I'm kind of just in between it. You know, I'm just like, I, I don't necessarily hate him, but I'd like to see, like, a, a fucking heel turn. And, like, I'd like to see... I'd like to see a heel turn you know, for someone else to get the main event. Yeah. It's like he... It's like... I know, now that this Brock Lesnar experiment's fucking over, jeez, that's, like, one thing that held back Monday Night Raw. I'm sorry to cut you off, but, like... Um, that's the one thing that held Monday Night Raw this last fucking year. I mean, Roman Reigns has essentially been in the main event, even though he hasn't had the fucking title this whole last like year and a fucking half, you know. And it's just, he's probably been in the back going, I deserve I'm just it. glad Ro- Brock Lesnar's gone for the foreseeable future because I'm fucking like I don't hear a lot of people talking about it, dude. But that shit got stale a long fucking time ago, dude. That like hit its peak the summer he went to UFC, dude. So that was like what two years ago. That was its peak, dude. Something like that. 2016 was Lesnar's peak, in my opinion. So, I don't fucking know, man. So, the first match was Finn Balor and Baron Corbin. How many fucking matches are going to get of this? I'm getting fucking sick and tired of it, dude. I'm Again, you know, I go back to their fucking too much fucking programming that we gotta see the same matches week in, week out. Like, basically, to me, Monday Night Raw is Finn Balor versus Baron Corbin and the B-Team versus the fucking Revival right now, dude. Like, we see those matches week in, a variation of those matches well, then, week in, week out. Well, then let's move on and talk yeah, just about... just fucking move on. I don't even want to talk about... What, what What was that? What? Wait, go back? Just so we can shit on it. I was on Sasha Banks versus Dana Brooke. Shit on it. Keep going, scrolling up, fucking. No, I'm Cody. not shitting on it. I'd like to see Dana Brooke do a porno. Oh. I'm serious. That'd be hot. I guess we could spend some time on Dana Brooke in <laughs> a porno, right there. I mean, there's nothing <laughs> wrong with Dana Brooke being in a porno. Maybe it'll be with Apollo Cruz. I don't know. She dude. got some huge ass titties, man. I'd love to see that. I Come mean, on, did, internet. Work on that to, shit. Why do we have to see Paige's pale, trashy ass fucking pale, banged pale. out by by half the mid card? Dude, Paige's got some nice titties though, dude. Come on. Yeah, but she looks fucking trashy. I don't know. She's been do- she's been getting her shit back together. I mean, I follow her on social media. She's a pretty lady. I don't no, know. What I mean by trash is like she's she was getting gang banged and shit, and that <laughs> shit got leaked. No, it's just a threesome. Like, that's not gang bang. Be- gang bang implies she had like a fucking the whole locker room running a fucking train on her, dude. She had Apollo Cruz and or not Apollo Cruz, but um, like Xavier Woods. I mean, and fucking uh, Brad Maddox, fucking tag teaming her out dude you know that's all it was dude you know that's all it was yeah but then she had other videos that's and just then, one video that got leaked. it's like her going to college dude she's like what 23 24 you gotta get that out of your system man you know she'll grow up she realizes it she's got a job she's doing it she's the gm of fucking smackdown cody she well, represents I she, hard i hope she's not getting represented hard in the back by everyone again <laughs> Hey, come on you know how corporate culture is they don't allow that shit anymore they don't allow that shit anymore china Fuck you, bitch. You did a porno or two for Vivid. Uh, uh, Paige. Oh, you did some trashy fucking hotel room gangbang, but, you know, you can come back, sweetie. Yeah, China you know, was addicted to... Well, uh, you know, yeah, China had a pretty strong drug addiction by that point, though, so they were just feeding her drugs. Well, isn't there, isn't there rumors that so did fucking Paige? Yeah, Paige. yeah allegedly there was... And, and, they're, and they're, they're, they're distinguishing... Uh, allegedly there was rumors, yes. They're... they're, they're uh, Triple H's reasoning for not allowing her is because well, I don't want my kids to Google her and find porn. <laughs> well, they're going to Google their dad and they're going to be like, who's this China lady? <laughs> That's the only reason he said it. I mean, why the fuck would his kids be looking up China in the first place? Like, oh, Sonny. Oh, dude, you know. What about Sonny? I could, yeah, Sonny, you, you sure can straight up buy personal time with Sonny to FaceTime that shit and watch her 
basically herself, you can mutual masturbate you tits. can mutually masturbate in front of fucking Sunny for her, for an nominal fee for like 30 bucks I think it's more than that but probably not much more than uh, 40, no, 40 I would say 100 150 I like doubt. I would nah man she char- you charge money for that, dude. You ain't paying. You ain't charging no 50 look that bucks. good in that fucking Dude, you know how video. many fucking fanboys that, that are sex, our age out that there? That anal sex video that she did was just fucking... It was embarrassing. I was, like, secondhand embarrassed for her. Like, what are you fucking doing? <laughs> like, why couldn't you have done this in, like, 97? Everyone knew you were sleeping with everyone in the back. Sleeping with Shawn Michaels. That's... that's... Let's see, she was banging and and, uh, and other people. She was cheating with Chris with a lot of people. Yeah, I don't know. Sorry, man. Um, yeah, no, it's a sad. But again, sad day. Sasha Banks, D- Dana, Dana Brooke, Brooke. If you if you want to take some some naked fucking selfies and link that shit to my email inbox, I'd I'd keep that between me and you. Yeah, yeah, Dana. Just look in our show notes. You'll find us on the our internet presence. Drop that DM, yo. I'll add you. Well, just look at her. She's hot as fuck. She got some big ass titties, a nice ass. They try yeah. to hide that shit. And some it's like, big old fucking titties. You can still see all that shit. Oh shit. Sasha Banks, like, what is she doing? How the fuck did they give this an A? A grade A? Was it really that great of a fucking match? I guess. Fucking, they're on the payroll, bro. Bleacher Report gets a solid hey. envelope every week. I would have given it a D, but not the, you know, A, B, C, D. I would have given her the D. <laughs> Moving on. Moving on. Seth Rollins International, uh, Intercontinental, International. Intercontinental uh, Championship Open Challenge. Open Kevin Challenge. Kevin Owens came out, he lost, and he quit. All I gotta say, man, I loved it when Kevin Owens opened up the in the ring and talking shit. You know, he's like, you know, oh, Toronto, Toronto. And then he, he healed them all up, saying, talking about, you know, how Montreal is better than Toronto and shit. Yeah. I love that fucking type of shit, dude. Kevin yeah, then Owens. he started talking in fucking, yeah. uh, in French, or French Canadian, rather, because French and French Canadian are yeah. a little different. This was definitely my favorite yeah. uh, spot on Monday Night Raw was yeah. the Seth Rollins Kevin Owens match. It was definitely like a pay per view quality match. And um, they put it on Raw for no reason at which all. Which they do with everything, but I mean, I guess, you know, whatever. <laughs> and some people would be like, oh, they gave it away on free TV, and I keep, I'm always adamant about this, Cody. Cable TV is not fucking free. You pay like a hundred fucking bucks for that every month. Yeah. Too fucking much. Too fucking much, motherfuckers. So. But, uh, hardly any of that goes to, to Raw. Yeah, but all in all, the segment of the week for me, dude. Kevin Owens, Kevin Owens, Kevin Owens quits. Kevin um, Owens. They're selling. They're selling Kevin Steen shirts on Pro Wrestling Tees currently at the moment. So they're you know at least like WWE allows him to do that shit. And this is like what the second time he's quit WWE this year. So, hey man, we got a, a certain event coming up this Saturday. Maybe Kevin Owens will roll in. I doubt that, but that's what everyone was saying. And people made uh, little little promo cards or whatever. Little that's promo cool. graphics. Yeah, everybody's... Kevin like, Owens is all in. Kevin Owens... And they'll be Kevin Steen, dude, because that's his indie name. Well, they like, still use that Kevin Owens. They, they, yeah. They're stupid, then. It's Kevin Steen. Well, they're Steen. marks, but what do you expect? Yeah, they're marks. That's his name. WWE, Kevin Owens. Snark, snark. Fuck you. But yeah, he... Fuck they had you. A good, they had a good match. He lost, and at the end of it, he said he quits. Um, mm-hmm. They gave it a day, thank God. Seems like they're real... Give him time. I, I know, dude. Like the Sasha Banks fucking Dana Brooke fucking match. I think they screwed up. Are you fucking serious? I think they screwed up and they just copy pasted it from a fucking. I think they you know, did. Like that had to have been a fucking from fuck a up, template. Dude. Yeah. And they left it from the fucking from the first one. Even though it takes more effort to go cop control C than it is just to type the fucking letter because it's one stroke and then well, you're no, because like because you got you got result but it's bold mm. so you gotta you gotta have the coding in it to. Make it bold. Okay. Okay. And you have space, and then you have grade, and I think they left you have a far more knowledge on HTML than I do. Cody. I think they I, left the A, and they just said fuck it, and then I tried creating a, a, a porn website in my high school um, IT class, dude, and they kicked me out. So yeah, uh, I didn't get to learn past the first week. Fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm just joking. I got I the IC got, title B plus in match that class. aftermath. This was probably the best segment. They gave this a B. Yeah. Like I could see giving the match a B and. The Kevin Owens thing, an A. But I, I think I, I think I think the I think giving this a a B is because they kind of you know no this is just a way to write him off of TV for a couple months or a couple right. weeks or whatever. And a couple weeks too. They ain't doing no months. He's probably not quitting. 
Yeah, he, he he's quit. still in WWE. Yeah. And they're probably not going to do anything with it outside of WWE or even inside WWE. Yeah. Because as we know, they like to drop the ball a lot. Like they so. hella drop the ball. In their analysis, they put that this gets a B hesitantly, if only because the creative direction of Owens is so uncertain. Yeah, it's pretty uncertain. I would agree with that. Moving on, non-title match. No, the don't revival. even cover it. I don't even want to talk about the revival we versus the B team. This. We were talking fuck about this. Fuck the B team and revival. Yeah, Bo- fuck the B team. Bo- but, the, but the revival, fucking a bunch of people on my own were like, yeah, the revival's fucking right. The fucking the tag team division on this on uh, Raw is a fucking joke. My deaf grandma could have told you the Raw tag team fucking scene was a joke. Your blind grandma. My, my deaf grandma, she can't hear, but, you know, she doesn't... She can't hear one way or the other, man. Huh? 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 But, yeah, I thought that part was good. The match was decent. They gave it a C plus, of course. You know, because it's not Roman, Sasha, uh... Seth. Seth. Yeah. Elias performs, um... It's not Trish Stratus' return for this. I mean, that's great. They're promoting, like, three events within one fucking TV show. Like, because, dude, they're, pro- they're promoting Hell in a Cell, The Evolution, and we got the promo for the fucking Australian shit with the Undertaker Triple H shit they're building up. Which, Which Shawn Michaels is going to be on Raw next week, dude. Aren't you excited? Yeah, I'm excited for a guy who looks like he fucking has aged like curdled milk. I know. Hey, this is Sean Michaels. I used to look cigarettes back in the day. <laughs> my name is Sean Michaels. I used to smoke cigarettes and I had my vocal cords ripped out because I got cancer. Yeah. And now I have to hold a thing to my throat. Hey. And it sounds really bad. Guess what? I got two words for you. Suck. 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 Remember when Kane did that with it? Remember when he had the voice box and he oh did God. that? They got when uh, X Pac and Kane were together and they got him to do that. He's like, Sucker. <laughs> that shit's hilarious. I like Elias, but can we please do something different well, with him? Well, he can't him? fucking wrestle, dude. They're not going to do shit with him because he can't wrestle. He can wrestle. I know he can wrestle. I liked his Seth Rollins match back at Money in the Bank, but or whichever pay-per-view it was, it all fucking runs together. But they're not, I mean, he's a fucking, he's, he's saddled with the gimmick, dude. This is what this is what they're going to keep rolling with him. It's like the, the Wyatt family something. staying together for so fucking they, they, long. They like, can do something different with the gimmick. Yeah. But they won't. Well, put them in a match then. And for whatever reason, Trish Stratus came Well, like out. I said, they're promoting the evolution shit. Well, which yeah. Which we saw, we saw later on point, what happened. My next. point is, is Elias? Trish Stratus. You're trying to put him in a feud? like in, Elias? Yeah. Trish Stratus. What the fuck does either of those things have to do with anything? Maybe Trish was just pissed off, you know, because uh, Elias is so full of himself that Trish is like, bro, bro, you gotta fucking calm it down. And Elias is like, you know what, bitch? You're 60. Go back to the fucking nursing home you crawled out of. Bitch! Bitch! Speaking of this and some titties, Trish Stratus looking fucking nice. All that yoga's paying off. DDP yoga? I don't know. She does some yoga. I think she has her own brand of yoga. D- okay. Double you- DP. <laughs> Double DP. <laughs> Dude, DP. Double D's getting... De- de- Too <laughs> cool. Double penetrated. <laughs> Anyways, moving on, Natalia versus Alicia Fox. Great to see Natalia get the win. I liked uh I liked the little uh Great seemed to like see it was a Alicia bit of a Fox trip. getting some T V time. Yeah. She is Alicia I like Alicia Foxy. Fox. Yeah, dude. Alicia, Alicia Fox. Foxy. I just recently started following Alicia Fox on Instagram, dude, and I gotta say, dude, um she she brings it every single time. She brings something, but I'm not it. I like I like sick. Alicia Fox. But yeah, I wish Alicia Fox and R Truth and a lot of people on the fucking roster would stop getting so underutilized. Mm. I don't get why they get underutilized because it's like you do realize that you. R Truth's like forty five though, bro. That guy's career is like pretty much at like he's lucky that he's still on TV. <laughs> you know, no offense to him, but yeah, like yeah, but he can still wrestle and he's a lot more he, entertaining. Can he wrestle though? Like I, I question that one. <laughs> I, I mean, so. he can put, I don't know. I don't think he's, like, the best wrestler. I mean, he's entertaining. But can can I ask why whenever Natalia does the sharpshooter, she sits on the girl's ass? Because well, women can't take fucking pressure on their back, Cody. Come on. Well, you don't. I, I don't know. You don't really. You, you, I don't know. Maybe they're forward. just, like, maybe women have shorter fucking legs. I don't fucking know, dude. 
I don't know. Either way, it doesn't... I'm not a ring technician. Either way, it's never worked for Why me. don't you tweet Natalia? Maybe she'll fucking reply. She'll never reply. I, I actually... Yeah, she'll... They don't ever reply to you. They just fucking... They don't even... T- they they probably even... are just gonna block us eventually. <laughs> talking so much shit. Start talking shit. We need, a, we need to step our game up, Cody. Step yeah, our you game start up. start talking even more shit. Fucking heal these bitches. Speaking about talking shit, Bobby Lashley in a handicap match. Fuck. Good to see that they're uh, steadily moving him along. Well, stepping back. What did Revival say? Did the Revival say? Dude, the, the tag team seems a joke. And what is this match? A joke? But no, man, it proves that Bobby Lashley... Bobby Trashley against the tag team. He's a very he strong beats man. beats the fucking tag team. He's a very strong man, Cody. And we wonder why people online think the Raw's tag team division is a fucking joke. Um, Because Bobby Lashley could take out the whole entire tag team scene? Is that what you're telling me? Because it is. Because it's a fucking farce. It's a farce, man. What do you mean, man? Why are you talking to me about that, man? (laughs) They gave this match a D minus. I would have just given it an F and called it even. Just flush it. Flush it. Losers all around here was their was their uh, conclusion to that. Is that match. the conclusion? Yeah, wow. their analysis. <coughs> was, so, uh, the uh, somehow the ascension has the polar opposite of momentum, whatever the fuck that is. His D momentum. I don't even know if that's a word, but no, not, it's fucking. No not one good. is more interested in in Lashley, and the fans have. Uh, no one is any more interested in Lashley, and the fans have the unfortunate task of sitting through a revi- uh, a rivalry. Between him and Corbin. Losers all around here. Yeah, losers all around here, Cody. Cody, moving on. Dean Ambrose versus Jinder Mahala. Jinder Mahala. Um, Yeah, I mean, afterthought at this point, right? I mean, we're really not talking about Jinder Mahala on a weekly basis. Good to see that he got some television time this week. Solid win for Dean Ambrose. Good to see that Ambrose got some television time too, but eventually we're going to have to get him in a feud with someone that means something that's not just random garbage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, you know, we're seeing him now with Drew McIntyre, Dolph Ziggler, and Braun Strowman. I mean, that's the feud they're moving into. Speaking of Dolph Ziggler and Drew McIntyre, they took on the style of Roman Reigns and Braun Strowman fighting style versus style. Do you challenge my style, Cody? Roman Reigns and Strowman versus Dolph Ziggler and Drew McIntyre. I think. <laughs> I think even your deaf grandmother could have seen this coming. Ha! I meant to say blind grandmother. I fucked up. You corrected me. Ha ha! You challenge my style. You've been watching way too many shitty, shittily dubbed fucking Japan <laughs> cartoons. Ha ha! Ha ha! But anyways, we, we, we foresaw something happen. Either Strowman was going to fucking, you know, when Roman goes for the hot tag, Strowman jumps off the apron and walks away, or he turns on him and just beats the shit out of him or whatever. But what we got was Strowman siding with Dolph Ziggler, Drew McIntyre, and the other two members of the Shield coming out one by one, and they all get fucking beat to a pulp, which I don't really get why. Yeah. You know, the good guys can't always win, Cody, so it's well, good get, to see I, Braun Strowman got the upper hand. I get that, but what, what are we doing here? Are we going to have a fucking... We're going to have a six-man tag at some point. Oh, We're going to have individual matches. Next week, it's going to be like, next week on Raw, Braun Strowman takes on Seth Rollins, while Dean Ambrose takes on Drew McIntyre, and fucking Dolph Ziggler takes on Roman Reigns. Like, we're going to see that next week, then we're going to see the six-man tag, and then, I don't know, they'll have like... A, I don't fucking know. They're just going to continue The it. result was a no contest... Which is another word for uh, a non-ending. Non-ending. We got a B grade from this, and they stated that the WWE took the hottest baby face it had and turned him heel. I don't think he turned him heel. This is just a, you know, a victim of circumstances. Yeah, and I agree with that. Like, what are they going to do? They're going to turn him face back. Once well, no, let's look at their over. options real quick. He's got they, they have the option eventually... Braun Strowman can can uh, learn to overcome, and he can take all three of them on uh, by himself. And in the meantime, also make all three of them worthless. Yeah. Or he could side with Dolph and Ziggler because the the old saying, uh, 
That way it doesn't make them look like a fucking... The shield look like a bunch of bitches. What is, what is the saying that the enemy of my enemy is my friend or right. some shit like that? No, you know that what makes sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good point. That's a good so, point. So, I don't think they necessarily turn him heel. I think he's still a face, but he, you know... He needs someone on his side who's going against these... The same people. Right, right. No, that, I like... The, eventually, yeah. like you said, he's going to turn on them and they're fucked. Yeah. So... That closed out raw. Thank God. I want to say though, I just got to point out that's a good uh, analysis, calling it like um, you know, like a friend. You know, the, and the enemy, enemy, of my enemy my... is my friend. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, I like that. That's good. That makes. I don't know. I kind of like the pairing now. When you put it in that perspective, it kind of like. Well, that's what they were thinking. Uh, right. I, have to, I, have I would to assume, imagine. right? I mean, that makes sense. That makes a hundred percent. All right. So now you wanted to talk about all in, brother. I want to get it all in on you, brother. Okay. So you know, going back to us, you know, we definitely need to be covering more professional that's, that's, wrestling. By the way, and, not to cut you off, but that's yeah, what yeah, fat, yeah. fat Mike girlfriend been saying. I want to go all the way. <laughs> but uh, all in pay per view <laughs> is tomorrow, Saturday. Ladies and gentlemen, this is being carried on the Ring of Honor on demand. Um, it's being carried on the Fight, uh, Fight, uh, whatever Fight, fight app? Network. It's not the Fight Network. It's um, the there's like the Pro fight, fight fucking app or some shit. I don't fucking know. Um, and then also uh, the first hour is being carried on WGN, so that's national, like over seventy million homes. Um, then plus it's being uh, carried on traditional pay per view. Dude, this is the first ever fully independent. And by wrestling, the way, we're not seeing a minute of this wrestling show that sold over ten thousand seats. You know, because within because twenty, what was it? Twenty nine minutes, they sold ten thousand seats. So the fact that the Young Bucks and Cody are coming out and balling out on this, dude, I'm I'm fucking excited. But you're right, you know, we're again, unfortunately again, not going like to watch said, it. But real, real real quick again, like I said earlier, mm-hmm. uh, what what was that about uh, underutilized talent? Ooh, yeah. moving on. Ooh, 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 ooh. No, but dude, just kind of like, you know, like I said, I know even though we're not like going to be reviewing this for the podcast, or like, watching I, still, it. I feel like it's important though that we still, you know, talk about it and because just kind of run through this. Yeah, dude, 100%. Like, what does the card look like? And, what dude, does the card person, look and just like, um, I'll go to the card here in a second, but I just want to kind of just say like my relation just with watching like being the elite. Like I sent you the fucking YouTube page and I was like, dude, you got to just binge this shit, dude. Like to me, it's the most interesting thing in professional wrestling right now. New Japan Pro Wrestling, Ring of Honor. The Bullet Club, fucking Cody Rhodes, uh, fucking Marty Skrull, fucking Hangman oh, Adam Page, fucking this, the Young Bucks, dude, Kenny never, Omega, my I, favorite. I never asked, but who the hell took control of the, the Bullet Club? Was it Cody or... Cody's in current control of the Bullet Club. He's currently the leader. Because weren't him and uh, Kenny, Kenny Omega, Omega they were They were feuding over the Bullet Club, and basically Cody Rhodes is the... Sem- I mean, they're all, like... He's still Bullet Club, but, like... Kenny Omega branched off and had become the the um, the Golden Lovers with um, um uh, what's his fucking name Kota Ibushi and um, I don't know if you watched the Cruiserweight Classic but he was that Kota Ibushi was in that same with um uh, fucking Zack Saber Jr. and shit and now they're both balling over in fucking New Japan Pro Wrestling but moving on let's go to get to the fucking card here um so. Um, in a singles match for the NWA World Heavyweight Championship, we have Nick Aldis, champion, defending his NWA championship against Cody Rhodes, who will be accompanied to the ring by Brandy Rhodes, his wife. Now, real quick, how, didn't uh, oh, shit, but uh, didn't Billy Corgan like revive the NWA? Billy Corgan currently owns the NWA. Nice. Yeah. He got Billy- fucked out of Impact, and he's like, "Well, fuck that. I'm." I'm- I'll go a step higher and I'll buy NWA. Who cares about Impact now? So him and uh, Dave Lagana, I believe, is the dude that's backing him up on that creatively and stuff. They're they're involved. Like Billy Corgan's involved in this, obviously, with the promotion of in. an NWA World Heavyweight Championship. At least this match. So, um, well, you know, if he's he's behind, like somehow behind the All In thing, because that's I don't know. That's all Cody and fucking. Um, they're the ones that have financed it all, and it's Cody and fucking the Young Bucks. But it's being like. A lot of people are coming in though and working on it and stuff, but nonetheless, um, you can I, see that's the problem yeah. with with the the whole the whole territory thing was like at least nowadays is I don't really know who's behind what, so it's like yeah. well, it's a lot of small groups in a sense, kind of like the NWA was, uh, you know, coming together and you know working together. Well, that's cool. So, so it's Cody Rhodes versus who it's again? Nick Aldis, which he was Magnus in, in uh, back in Impact. Oh, okay. remember Magnus? Yeah, yeah. So 
Um, they're going to fight. And so basically, if Cody Rhodes wins, he'll be the first ever um, second generation NWA World Heavyweight Champion because his dad, Dusty Rhodes, fucking won the title back in the well, day. Well, then that sort of predetermines the. You, you, you would think so, but you never know. Then again, the NWA isn't really like WWE where, they're, where they get off on that kind of shit, where it's like, oh, it's the first ever blah, blah, blah sort of thing. Well, you know, the, the talk going into it, though, is like, you know, it's pretty. It's being talked up pretty heavy, you know. It's like. You, you would think Cody Rhodes is going to automatically win, but maybe they're going to fuck him over in some way. You know, you never know what's going to happen. And then, and then it'll lead to a six month or eight month or whatever feud between the two. Who maybe. Who knows? Next one. Uh, we got uh, Okada versus Marty Skrull. Um, Marty what? A Skrull. He's Skrull? a he's a junior heavy Skrull, like S C. I thought at, for, at first you said Skrull. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Anyway, he's a he's a junior heavyweight out of New Japan Pro Wrestling. He's out of England. Yeah. Um. And Okada is like... Was he involved in the England title tournament? No, thing he's NXT Bullet Club. Doing? Marty Skrull is Bullet Club. Oh, okay. So, like, basically your main Bullet Club members right now, you got fucking Marty Skrull, Hangman Page, the Young Bucks, Cody Rhodes, and Kenny Omega. That's, like, your your main core. I mean, there are there's an offshoot going on called the Firing Range, and that's, like, uh, Tama Tonga and, like, Haku. Remember fucking Haku? Yeah. Well, his sons is Tama Tonga, and um, I don't remember... You remember... Um, was it, what's that fucking guy's name? Well, um, he was he fe- feuded with a, an, um, he feuded with fucking Sin Cara like a couple years back. The guy he rode the bike. He's Sin Cara now. He play he plays Sin Cara. Huncio, H- H- I forget his fucking name. Anyway, his their brother was in WWE for some time. Junicio or something. Yeah, he was like this dude's fucking bodyguard. Huh. Um, anyway, fucking, so, uh, but going back, that's your, your main members of the Bullet Club, so going back to the okada Skrull match, it's kind of being pitted that it's like a heavyweight versus a junior heavyweight, and nobody thinks Skrull's gonna win, because he's a junior heavyweight, and, you know, in Japan, that, that kind of played, like, actual weight class actually is Matters a big there. factor, you know? So, because you're either junior heavyweight or you're heavyweight, that's, those are the only two classes there. Whereas here, we don't really give a shit. Well, no I'm... one gives a shit here, unless you're 205. What? <laughs> We'll have well, not really. No, no one cares right. about two hundred five either. Dan, Daniel Bryan's uh, going to forever be. I know Finn Balor or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Those, Finn Balor and Daniel Bryan are two hundred five live, but yeah, they're main event, you know. But nonetheless, um, so that's kind of the storyline. And if you've been following the being the, being the elite, um, they've been building up all these cards. All the show, whole show has been built up on their YouTube show, dude. So like. It's it basically ended this last uh, with the, this week's go home show. Marty Scroll just getting cut in a raving promo against Okada, being like, you know, he no one believes in me, no one believes in me. I'm gonna fucking do this. So I, I want to see Scroll win the fucking match, dude. I want to see him beat Okada. And Okada, for since I know you don't know a lot the about junior. Yeah, he's the jun- Marty Scroll's the junior heavyweight, but um, well, that'd Okada, be awesome to see him Okada's win. like basically like the John Cena of fucking. Uh, he's he would be considered like a John Cena, Randy Orton esque. Like for New Japan Pro Wrestling, he just yeah. lost the the like he had like a legendary reign of like over over a year and a half, like basically like a couple of years. It's, it feels like it's been a couple of years um, as the IG, IG, I, IWGP uh, World Heavyweight Champion. But Kenny Omega just beat him this year at, um, at fucking um, over in Japan and whatnot, and finally claimed the title at Dominion. Um, so anyway, it's gonna be a fun match, you know, junior heavyweight versus yeah. heavyweight. So I'm I'm pulling for Marty Squirrel. Got Joey Janela with Penelope. Well, look, I've not even watched him. I'm already pulling for Marty because, you know. I know, dude, right? Like, fuck this big fucking Godzilla motherfucker. That's right, dude. That's right. Go, Marty. So we got Joey Janela with Penelope Ford versus Hangman Page in a Chicago street fight. Fuck yeah. Dude, Chicago street fight, dude. Pa- Hangman Page. Like, I hope we get, like, an 80s style motherfucking, you know, like a, an 80s style NWA fucking match. It, they were hardcore before it was hardcore. Like, I watched yeah. one of those fucking uh, Super Brawls or something like that. Starcades. Starcades. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From the 80s. And it wasn't even promoted as, like, a fucking hardcore event or anything. And you had it in the first match or second match or something. Uh, it was, like, a, a rope. And there was, like, a bell or something. And it was uh, Rowdy Rowdy Piper versus someone. And uh-huh. his ear was all bloody and, like... Oh, the, that dog collar match with Greg Valentine? That's the yeah. one. Yeah, it was 83, dude. 83, yeah. yeah. And there was like five ma- uh, eight matches on the card and five of them had fucking blood and some of them had both of them fucking yeah. bleeding and shit. It was, it was insane. And it's like, people think of NWA as being like this fucking just like real, 
like eighties NWA and and you know like up to like ninety three or so the WCW they thought of it as being like this sort of vanilla fucking wrestling and I was like no there's like lots of color and lots of fucking like hardcore shit like you get what I'm saying though no I definitely understand exactly what you're saying man but I'm I am hoping for a violent match as well you know so I hope someone goes to the fucking hospital but, like 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 yeah. No, like, like, no work, just flat out fucking... They have to cart it off to the fucking hospital. And then and then the person who wins can fucking brag about it for the next two months. So the the storyline kind of going into this one is um, Hangman Page on uh, Being the Elite. He murdered Joey Ryan. You know Joey Ryan is the guy that, that does the dick fucking flips and shit? <laughs> you're, 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 ro- you're rolling of your eyes says it all. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you've heard... A Joey Ryan. So yeah. anyway, so the the idea is is uh, hey, and by man, the way, I, anyone who books this fucking asshole needs to be fucking shot. Well, they booked it. They're gonna book Joey Ryan. Joey Ryan's gonna be there probably. So because they're paying, they gotta pay off this this angle. So Hangman Page fucking murdered a Joey Ryan, and so what the idea is is that Hangman Page um is like having these hallucinations where his like boots are talking to him. So like, cause he's he's a cowboy, what? right? So he has like signature cowboy boots, right? His so like, boots are his boots are talking to him. So he threw his boots away, right? So he just in this last episode he got new boots. So um, please and they and they've shown. Please don't tell me he's been walking around barefoot. Yeah, he has been walking around barefoot. Um, so and on top of that, they've shown Joey Ryan like that he's alive and well. So like, Joey Ryan's gonna show up and cost Hangman Page the the match. I think I think Joey Janela is gonna go over. But we're gonna see the emergence of Joey Ryan. Well, that's awesome. I'm I'm pretty stoked. It's a it's a well done story, dude. Like it's an actual fucking story. It's it's stu- it's stupid as talking shoes are. I'm like, dude, I, I admire the creativeness. You know, it's it's great. It's, it's kind of it's kind of late nineties fucking WCW, but you know. Yeah, yeah. It's so, not the entire card. that's fucking you know that yeah. kind of wacky bullshit. So exactly. Um, our next match we got Christopher Daniels, which uh, he was the former Ring of Honor champion, and obviously he was an Impact. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, versus uh, the uh, Stephen Amell, he's the dude from um, the the fucking Green the Green, Green Arrow. Arrow, the guy that was in the SummerSlam pay per view. Oh, Neville. the guy who was who's been feuding with fucking Cody Rhodes when he was yeah. the star. Well, of the yeah, Stephen Amell's buddy with Cody because Cody's been doing Arrow still. He's going on doing so guest wait, spots. Is, has Stephen Amell been training to be a wrestler? Yeah, he's going to have a match against against Christopher Daniels. And they've been they've been doing a back and forth beef between like them. He's, talking has he shit. actually been training? Yeah, he's, I'm sure he's been training. Yeah. Is he gonna be one of these Jay Leno fucking? I think well, dude, he's a, he's in a little bit better shape than Jay Leno was. So, um, well, I mean, those there's Dennis Rodman, I think, and Carl Malone, and right, those ma- and and David. Uh, well, David I mean, Arquette, it's a it's it's definitely a celebrity match. You know, it's a celebrity match, but who I think it's gonna be a still gets booked. David Arquette, why? Yeah, David Arquette has. No, no skills in the w, in a wrestling ring whatsoever. But Stephen Amell, yeah, but Stephen Amell, I think is a little bit better. So, but nonetheless, but my um, point is, yeah. is, has he actually been training? And is he yeah. actually going to pull yeah, off? Yeah, a match I think he's or... going to. Yeah, he's That's going good. to. We're also going to see the Briscoe brothers, um, Jay Briscoe and Mark Briscoe versus SoCal and Uns- uh, Uncensored, which is Frankie Kazarian and Scorpio Sky. Which Frankie Kazarian and Scorpio Sky are fucking awesome, dude. Same with Christopher Dan- Daniels combined, they make SoCal and Uncensored. And their whole gimmick is is that whenever they come into a city, they're just like, this is the worst fucking place ever, and they just run it down. Because, you know, SoCal, Southern California is the best, you know, and they're all just like, fucking, I don't know. I get off on fucking Frankie Kazarian, Scorpio Sky, and Christopher Daniel. Nice. I think it's great. So that'll be a fun match. Frisco Brothers are fucking great. Um, over the budget battle royal. So this is kind of, you know, just like, you know, you're, you're under the giant memorial battle royal. The winner of this gets a championship, a number one contender match for later in the evening. Um, against, for what championship? Uh, for the Ring of Honor championship. So they're going to face cool. Jay Lethal. Which, on um, being the elite, they teased... Remember Machismo? Black yeah. Machismo from TNA? Yeah. Yeah, so fucking... Um, they, they did this like really great fucking shot where like... Um, he looks... Jay Lethal looks down in his bag and he sees like the, the, the Macho Man fucking outfit. He's like, oh shit! And then they come back to it and it's like a hallucinogen, hallucination and shit. And then they, um, they go and he's in the bathroom and shit. And they cut to like... His inner is, you see Black Machismo come out and he's like telling Jay Lethal, he's like, I'm coming. The only reason, brother, you know, is because you're fucking, because of me is the reason you're the Ring of Honor world champion because that's what basically kind of 
started fucking Jay Lethal's career. Huh. Um, so yeah, he's gonna face the winner of the over budget battle royal. I'm, like not spending too much time on this because I know we're running late on this fucking episode and it's really hot in your fucking room. Um, they've been doing this whole fucking thing with this dude named Flip Gordon. Yeah. And Flip Gordon basically is this. It's designed to get him over. Okay, so they're basically said you know book. The, people are like you know book Flip, yeah. you know onto the show. But Cody has for some reason has it against Flip. So like Flip is not booked in all in. Right, he's the one wrestler that's not booked. Right, so like they on on being the elite last week they parodied parodied uh, Beyond the Mat with uh, uh, I think it was Beyond the Mat with Terry Funk. Yeah. And he's gonna do that last match. And that one guy that fucking did the ref spot. I forget that fucking dude's name. Like Dennis something. Um, but like they, they parodied that and it was fucking amazing dude I highly suggest if you haven't seen it to go seek out the last couple weeks of the, the show um, but moving on I think Flip Warren is going to somehow get into the to the over budget battle royal because they did this whole scene where like they have this character where he's like maybe he'll wear a mask that's what I'm saying because like they, they have this character uh, where he's like they have this old uh, Mexican luchador wrestler right and they, 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 they Cody Rhodes and the Young Bucks they look up to this guy right so this guy approached Cody Rhodes on being the elite. And it's going to be this guy. Yeah. Well, so he's like, he's like, they'll be looking up towards this fucking Well, it's guy, not right? even that. No. It's like, no. he's like, he's like, well, no, I have family members. Can you put my family members, some of my, my, my nieces and nephews into the, the over the budget battle royal, right? Yeah. And so fucking, um, I'm thinking is one of the nephews or whatever is going to be Flip Gordon and he's going to win the battle royal under the mask and go on and possibly win the ring of honor world championship. That's what I'm calling That'd be awesome. I, I thought it'd be fun. It'd be fun as shit, dude. There's um, a story there. Yeah. We're also going to see Madison Rain versus Britt Baker versus Chelsea Green versus Tessa Blanchard in a four-way match. Uh, this is, um, you know, this is your, your women's match. Um, all four of these women are fucking great workers. Should be solid. Um, we have Jay Lethal, obviously, yeah, against right, the winner. Pretty hot, too. Um, in getting down to our two main events of the evening, um, we have Kenny Omega versus Pentagon Jr., which is like a fucking dream match. That's New Japan, Ring of Honor versus fucking Impact, dude. Um, so Pentagon Jr., like, I don't know how well-versed you are in him, but like seeing the shit he's doing on Impact and on MLW, dude, he's, Was he on, uh, he's solid, Lucha dude. Lucha Underground as well? I think he's on Lucha Underground, too. Dude, he's a solid fucking wrestler, and he may end up going to WWE at some point. So it's like it's great to see him and Kenny Omega. That's so bad because they they underuse. I know, I know, I know. But you know what I'm saying though. Everybody's WWE WWE bound pretty much on this fucking card. It seems like, but Kenny Omega, man, Kenny Omega is the fucking shit, dude. So like nobody's better than Kenny Omega right now. He's the best professional wrestler. It seems like Cody Rhodes has been doing better outside of WWE. Cody Rhodes is the man, dude. I fucking love Cody Rhodes. I don't, I don't, I don't think that any of them are going to go WWE anytime soon. I think they're, from what they've said in the interviews, is that they're committed to each other as a group, and that they, you know, they're basically going to make decisions as a group. So it's like, so all right, like a new click, kind of, yeah, huh? kind of, yeah. It's great. I love this. Is like I'm saying, dude. This is my favorite thing about professional wrestling right now. If you want to like last week and you're like, oh, suggestions, suggestions, like this is what I suggest, dude. New Japan Pro Wrestling, All In, MLW, Defy, whatever your local promotion is. That's ours, so I obviously have to support that. But all right, man, that's fucking all in, dude, and we're all out of time, Cody. We what? had one more thing. To talk what do we about got? That. What? What do we got? Well, there's the thing about the Bellas, and I looked at it, and no. We one already talked about the Bellas. No one, no one cares about the Bellas. We talked about the Bellas. All right, then uh, there's one last thing. I had asked on Twitter, "Hey everyone, did you used to watch wrestling at one time? WWE, WCW, Impact, etc." Yeah. If you stopped watching, why? Because we're curious. We want to know why people stopped watching. I mean, we're curious motherfuckers. And I had to add uh, that uh, this was going to be something, a topic of discussion for our podcast. I should add that this will be a topic for some discussion. Yeah, we're going to talk about you motherfuckers out there. And they're like, hey man, I'm going to get mentioned on the Totally Unnecessary Wrestling Podcast. Fucking A, man. Someone, someone answered and said, I used to. Yeah, well, what, 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 why, what, what, why'd you stop then, buddy? Like, where's your, where's your reasoning behind that then? Yeah, I had to, I had to reiterate and quote to him, if you stopped watching, why? Cody, our fans are the best, aren't they? And he says, I don't know. Why would we stop listening to you guys? Uh, stark snark. I don't know. I guess I just lost interest in it. Another person. Okay, quite a good, a fucking great detail. Well, when Goldberg came back, well, fuck you. Another person uh, replied, actually gave a, a good reply. This guy is uh, known as That One Drew Guy on Twitter. What's up, That One Drew Guy? He said, the constant pushing of Roman Reigns. <clears throat> <clears throat> I wonder who else has been stating that. Who, 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 who? 
An inexplicable burial of NXT call-ups have led, another thing that I've stated, have led to, uh, have led me to read reports versus, versus watching it live. Well, man. I don't blame you. He should, he should totally just, you know, commit to us every week and just make sure, make sure you're listening to us for your results there, buddy. I don't blame you. We're, we're, we're we're solid reporters here, guys. Daniel Crooks. Daniel Crooks. That replied, most of the wrestlers I watched retired and I don't like the new stuff. He's an attitude era lover. He's an attitude era lover, bro. Well, I think that might be a female. Oh, is it a woman? I think Good to see that we got diversity on this podcast, Cody. <laughs> I think it may or may not be a woman. I don't know. No, Danielle, you're right. It could be Danielle. Danielle. Daniela. From France or something. Anyway. We got fans in France. We're I, international, I, bro. I would, I would like to possibly translate the last part of that as being, uh, you know... Pushing people people don't really care for. Uh, you know, focusing on people while they wish other people would get a chance. She probably liked spot. Edge. She probably liked Edge and shit. And she was like, fucking once Edge left, I'm done. I'm fucking done, WWE. Yeah, and if WWE keeps pushing people that, you know, you don't like towards the main event era area right, of right, the card. Right. Whereas, you know, you think the bottom of the card or the middle of the card or, you know, have more... More to offer. people, yeah. but they keep getting fucked over. And no, I know what you mean. Sort of that. 50, I've been waiting for that Zack Ryder World Heavyweight Championship run for about fucking sixteen years now, Cody. <laughs> That's never happening. He was over at one point too. He was over at one point. Twice actually. He was over twice, despite WWE's bullshit. He was over twice. And what does he do? He opens fucking goddamn uh, toys on their on their Facebook and YouTube pages. They just started a podcast. Uh, him and uh, Kurt Hawkins. Well, it started a them. podcast about good fucking them. T- Moving toy on, figures. DJ I don't know how you fucking pronounce that. At the J perspective, bros. Rosif. He said, I was an avid fan of SmackDown and Raw, believe it or not, before Guerrero died. This is Eddie Guerrero. Not so we're going back to 2005. Shit. Died and Cena became a sellout to celebrity. But after Guerrero died, I was I just kind of tapered off. Well, okay, first off, I just got to point out the fact that Cena becoming a sellout to celebrity has happened more recently. Guerrero passing away was back in 2005, so if you waited until Cena sold out to being a celebrity, that means you never stopped watching. I'm calling this bullshit. He's, he's always been watching. He's just trying to act all cool on Twitter. Well, no, I think what he's talking about is when uh, Cena started doing the movies like the Marine. Oh, the Marine, because the Marine was such a hit, Cody. That's what that's what got John Cena yes, on the mainstream but, fucking... Yes, but that started him getting on the Tonight, uh, the Today Show. They the always put show. him on the fucking Late Shows. He wasn't on the Today... He wasn't on the Today and Tonight Show up until, like, the last, like, three or four fucking years, dude. I call bullshit, man! I don't call bullshit. This guy never stopped watching. That's all I'm trying to say. I'm just what I'm saying is that from that he stopped watching around the start of all this. Right, I get you, I get you. Yeah, it's probably. I mean, yeah, when Guerrero. I'm surprised, died, no I'm five, surprised yeah. Cena hasn't been in a remake of, of Mr. Nanny and Suburban Commando. Cena's above that, bro. Cena's way better than Hulk Hogan, dude. <laughs> Anyways, there's the, the the hashtag stream the scream of Sir Nasty. Well, they owe his money. They owe his money now for that fucking free promotion. Yeah, I guess so. Three of the five that use this account are hashtag WWE for Life fans. Who the fuck uses that hashtag? I'm gonna start doing that, Cody. Be like, hey, Cody, are we gonna watch Raw tonight? Hashtag WWE for Life. <laughs> That's so fucking lame, dude. That's fucking dumb. Well, someone's fucking burying people now. Oh, I'm burying everybody tonight, dude. <laughs> I'm gonna give you a. a Triple H is the golden shovel there, pal. They put they they stated the hashtag TNA hashtag Impact just isn't consistent enough sometimes, brother. Hey, they're they're turning the corner. They're turning the corner. Uh, the Benoit murder. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That wins the fucking right there, bro. Yeah, I can understand why somebody would stop watching professional what <laughs> wrestling after that. Okay, fucking damn, dude. Texas Rex from Omaha, 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 Omaha. Omaha. Oh, that's a yeah. That and the, and the last great. person stated when I was a kid, I watched wrestling. Pretty much only a handful of guys: Andre the Giant, Rowdy Roddy Piper, Rocky Johnson. I think this is a guy who's a little older than 
rest of the people replying. Yeah. And a couple of others. Once they were gone, there was no one really appealed to me at the time. So he's telling me it's once Basically, they got... Basically, didn't give a shit about Hulk Hogan. No, I was going to say, well, once... Uh... Well, under the giant Roddy Roddy Piper, that's all Hulk Hogan. He just didn't name Hulk Hogan. Um, I was going to say once they got up to, like, what, Shawn Michaels fucking diesel era fucking like mid 90 92. 93 94 95 going up there that's probably when he just like oh, oh fuck this shit didn't come back for the attitude era apparently once they were gone that's a no fucking one. i gotta say dude kid phantasm that's a badass fucking avatar picture man tall man fuck yeah i love boy. it boy i love to me some phantasm boy oh, boy <laughs> For whatever reason, have never really gone back. Uh, another friend of mine who somehow isn't here. For watching wrestling back then, using the name Kid probably isn't the best fucking thing either. Kid Phantasm. <laughs> Yo, bro, I'm like 60 years old, but I'm a kid at heart. And I like Phantasm. But anyways, another friend of mine, Carlos, he had mentioned that uh, that he, you know, he may, he may watch the the pay-per-views but he really hasn't watched it like Like weekly tv i think he got uh the network just recently for SummerSlam, but hasn't really watched much before that if we if we weren't doing the podcast i wouldn't watch wrestling weekly there'd be no fucking point to you can watch the pay-per-views monthly and that's it that's all you fucking need to see yeah because you can listen to podcasts live reports the video packages are pretty well done they've always been pretty well done since like 90 They've always done good videos. They've always had really good fucking high videos. Yeah, but they stepped it up to the next level in like 97 or something. Yeah, it was kind of late 90s, yeah. So, yeah. It's always better than WCW, that's for sure. (laughs) Even when when WCW was kicking their ass, WWE always had better fucking high videos. I've had other friends who have not, who didn't comment on this, but they basically said, oh, I only watch the pay-per-views or... Yeah. I sort of don't really watch anymore because of this and that and the other and... Yeah, well, you know, it is what it is, man, you know. Basically, a lot of them have stated that it was, you know, along similar lines of what we have stated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we still have to watch professional wrestling, so we'll be back next week with an all-new episode. Fuck we're- that, we're going all-in on horror. <laughs> Alright, man, any final thoughts, Cody? Those were my final Okay, thoughts. man, we're going to fucking wrap it up then, bitches, so we will see you next time. Yeah, that, uh, that whole uh, all-in thing took us over the... Over the- over the time, over the time. Bullet Club. Four, 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 four